All right. So doing a little change up lately. I'm getting tired of playing the uh, card games. Thought I'd play something a little different. Uh, so this game, uh, for those that don't know it, is called Cataclysm: Dark Days Ahead. <clears throat> it uh, kind of has a similar, you know, control and graphical scheme to like the original roguelike games. Um, if you played like Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode, kind of a similar idea, but this one's much more involved and, you know, as far as like a zombie survival games go, it's actually the best game I've played in the genre. Uh, and it's completely free, you know, but it's definitely not for everybody. Um, you know, the default game, it uses these sort of ASCII type graphics you see here. I will be using a tile set because I find that's a lot better. Um, but, you know, at any rate, if you care at all about graphics in a game, this is not the game for you. Uh, this game is definitely one of those games that are super nerdy. Um, there's a lot of freedom with what you can do in this game. Definitely very sandbox like. Uh, it's open source, so like you got a team of just people working on it. They update it constantly for years. Uh, it's updated much more than any like actual paid for game does. Uh, so I don't know. I, I I definitely like the game a lot. But we'll start a new one here. I've, it's been a while since I since I really played it. Um, so we'll create a new. Uh, world here. I think I'll just keep everything relatively default. Um, oh yeah, I'll just keep everything relatively default. So anything here I want, I think this is all fine. Stevensville. Don't know who Steven is, but let's check out his bill. All right, so Stevensville is the world we want to go to. Do a new game. I always create a new character each time. I find the character creation process pretty fun. So Stevensville, it'll load up here. So first thing you're gonna have here is three options for really like creating rules for creating your character, I guess. It's, the most limiting would be multiple pools. Uh, single pool, to me, is more like a standard game where you just you have a set amount of points and you can put them into whatever. The multiple pool kind of limits the areas you can put them into. Uh, for that reason, I, I don't really like multiple pools. And then free form is just, you know, if you want to create like a god mode character or whatnot, um, you know, free to do that. But they're just I, I do with this game if you if you kind of cheat yourself out of the progression you're not going to really enjoy it as much in my opinion. But I definitely like single pool. Um, I don't really like to like be limited in what I can put my points in. You're still limited somewhat. Like you can only take so many traits and negative traits. Um, so let's go here. You know, so you can kind of choose a scenario. Now you'll notice at the top here. You know, we have the points left, eight. That was kind of the default that you get. Uh, depending on the challenge you do here, you can gain more points to use or you can even lose them. Um, that's just because, you know, it's like deemed some of these challenges are so hard that uh, you can be awarded a few extra points to put into your character, especially like these, these challenge ones. They're pretty dang hard. Um, I won't be doing them. I'm... I kind of got a niche or an, an itch to play the game because I've been watching uh, Alone, that show that's basically like uh, they drop people in the wilderness and they legit have to like survive. So, kind of wanted to do uh, this game's you know, it's a zombie survival game at its core, but like it kind of has a lot of like as far as like survival and crafting elements go, it, it's pretty dang involved and, and I really like it for that so uh, wilderness you know we're not going to start in like a shelter or a city like you normally do 
Uh, but I kind of like that. I want to just build like my own cabin out in the woods somewhere. But we'll start building like a little leaf shelter and stuff. Uh, so the profession, same type of thing. Some of these professions you're going to get extra points because they're kind of a difficult start. Um, you know, like crackhead, you're going to be addicted to crack. Um, or you're going to be withdrawing from crack. Same with like heroin and medics, tweaker, all that shit. Prototype Cyborg, um, forget why this one, I think there's, I don't know, I, I haven't really played with the Cyborgs, I failed Cyborg makes sense, I don't know why Prototype gives it to you extra, but I think what we're going to do, um, Chain Smoker could be okay, basically what I'll, what I'll really want is somebody that has a way to light things, this guy starts with a lighter, so that could help with that. And he gets an extra point, which is nice. Nicotine withdrawal is pretty minor. It's not that, like, if I'm comparing it to, like, crack withdrawal, not even close. Like, the crack, or especially, like, the meth withdrawal is, is pretty, I guess, amphetamine withdrawal is, like, pretty brutal. To do hobo alcohol withdrawal, you just kind of puke and move slowly for a bit. Uh, he gets a matchbook, too. He also gets a bindle, which, uh, since I won't be near an area to like get a backpack, that could be pretty good. It's somewhat like a bindle. That's like you see like the old cartoons where like a dude leaves home and has a stick with like a cloth carrying thing. So it's not like as good as a backpack, but it at least gives you some extra carrying space. Not a lot of these people start with like a good storage option. <clears throat> Naked and afraid, that could be interesting. You'd be pretty fucked though, because like wilderness start, from what I recall, like if you don't have fire, is really hard to pull off. Um, though, you know what? I suppose I can make fire if I just take like one of the nearsighted like the negative perks because you can use your glasses to start a fire so that's probably an option too. What about lumberjack? What do they start with? Axe would be nice to start with in the woods. Oh, backpacker. Leather backpack would be nice. Mm. Senior citizen, time crafty, lead boy. Still kind of wouldn't want this. Like, I feel like Hobo is a really good starter. You get an extra point. You have a matchbook. You have a bindle. You even have some food. You got a knife. Knife is pretty useful too. I think Kobo is pretty good. <clears throat> As for these, I feel like strength is probably the most useful trait typically. I mean, it really depends on where you're going for. Um, let's go ahead and up that to at least 12, I think. Dexterity is pretty useful too. Like, perception and dexterity are pretty similar, but uh, perception is geared more toward like ranged weaponry. Dexterity still helps with ranged weaponry, but it's much more useful for like uh, melee, as you can see. It's like hmm. I think I like that for now. So let's go to the traits. This is one of those games where you can, you know, gain stuff from having negative traits, which I really like. Oop. Um, so let's see which I, I kind of like to just stack up all as much negative traits as I can because there's most negative traits. It's like if you're smart about it, they're either not negative or even a positive for you in some cases. Like, uh, let's see. 
like far sighted. You start with the glasses. Um, I could even save some matches if I want to light fires during the day because now I have I can use my glasses to start a fire if the sun is bright enough. Oh, looks like they've changed a few mechanics since I last played. So hmm, this will be interesting. I wonder if that's the same. What was it? Pack meal. Oh, lame. So there's like an there's a concept of like carry volume. Pack meal and disorganized used to affect your carry volume, but it looks like now it just affects your speed to retrieve things from containers like very minorly it doesn't seem huh i don't know if i like that change yeah whatever um i wonder what else has changed so fragile i give you eight points but it's pretty brutal to take your health down that much flimsy is much more doable like you think like your HP, like knocking off 25 would be a big deal, but it really isn't. Um, especially like glass jar, I pretty much always take. Uh, the way this game works is you, you're going to have your four limbs, and then you're going to have your chest, and then your head. Those are all have their independent health pools, and any of them can get hit. Glass jar only knocks 20 off of just your head. Uh, that's not that much really, and it's a pretty easy two points to gain. This one, I've never really played uh, focusing on mutations, so like, I don't know. I, I kind of like to leave this one off. Wow, 12 points. It must be really bad then. <laughs> Uh, but I, if I ever want to like actually play in-game content enough to actually get mutations... I'd like to leave that option open for me, really. Um, oh, and forgetful, as I said, you know, you could just take free form and kind of cheat the game. I forgetful is, I consider it kind of cheating the game. Uh, I've I've taken it a lot. You, you you can take it; it's fine. The the reason it's cheating is like so it earns you three points, which is a pretty good amount of points, but. You'll see that it says your skills erode slightly faster than usual. Well, by default, skills don't actually erode in this game. That's like a mechanic. I don't. Maybe maybe in the current patch they do, but at least for the many years that I played, erosion skill erosion just never was like actually implemented into the game. So taking this is kind of cheating. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that. Plus, and to be honest, I the other thing, the not remembering terrain, it's pretty minor, but. It's annoying enough for me that I actually just, from a fun factor, would rather re remember my terrain more. So that is one thing that is implemented. Uh, let's see, fast metabolism is not too bad, although it could be rough for a, a wild wood start. It earns two points. Um, you know, I might. Dude, I could make myself super fat. Uh, that's not too bad for a wilderness start because I'm not really going to even run from much and having a little bit of extra weight because I'm probably going to have trouble getting food at the start is not a bad thing. I'm also going to be throwing up at the start because I'm going through alcohol withdrawal. Uh, let's see. Ugly is probably fine. Uh, weak stomach. Maybe truth teller. Yeah, that's. You could even argue ugly and truth teller are borderline cheating, but in my opinion, they only give you one point, and it's not like these things are not implemented. It's just that there's not a whole lot of friendly NPCs in the game, so it's not really that bad of a thing to do these things. Like I've pretty much never ever successfully met more than like one NPC in a playthrough, uh, like friendly NPC at least. There's certainly a lot of unfriendly NPCs. But while uh, Wilderness start, I'm not even gonna start around an NPC, so I think those make sense. Um, thin skin could be okay. 
Though there is a lot of cutting and bash damage in them. This would be bad in the wilderness start because it's pretty hard to find like the town from the wilderness start a lot of the time, so you need over map like sight. Squeamish could be okay. I mean, I am. I kind of need some bigger ones here, though. Like, let's see. I, I need stuff that earns me more points. So you'll notice, like, at the top, it has like minus 7 out of 12. Oh, wait, you know what? Oh, right, right, okay. So I, I can only take minus 12 worth worth of like negative points so squeamish is a fine one that's basically mean like you'll find a lot of zombies and their clothes are basically labeled filthy normally you just get like a, a morale uh hit for wearing them but considering i'm probably not going to be around that much zombies at the start squeamish is fine and even then i usually take squeamish anyway because you're going to want to like clean your clothes anyway eventually so it only kind of delays you being able to like immediately put stuff on oh there's heavy sleeper heavy sleeper is a pretty good one this is like this is one of those that's kind of a positive in my opinion like it's actually pretty hard to stay asleep in this game a lot of the time like if you're in any amount of pain or if there's any sort of noise going on you will wake up and you can't sleep and it just kind of bites but uh and really you should be sleeping in areas that are safe enough that heavy sleepers shouldn't be that bad of a thing for you uh let's see i don't want any allergies i don't think i want to keep my food options open um, what other ones were there? Death. I could take nearsighted as well. I'll start with bifocals, I think, if I do this. It's pretty hard for your glasses to get broken. And I can eventually find more if they do. So I just need one more point of negative stuff. Meat and tolerance should be really bad. Lightweight. Hmm. Well, I, I could do lactose intolerance. I mean, I'm not going to be around milk for a while. What else do we got? Just need one that's worth one. Bad knees? No, we don't want that. Albino? I've never taken albino. Oh, I could do strong scent. That's fine. That almost is another positive. It kind of helps you with your hunting. They'll just make the animals come to you more often. Uh, let's see, we should make our dude kind of like a mountain man, I think. So, definitely beard. Let's say gunslinger beard. Is there like a big beard option? Van Dyke, I don't know. Not like any of this really matters. Uh, let's just say anchor beard. Oh, beard. And let's make it gray and long. Yeah, like a proper hobo. Um, so I guess pack meal's not good anymore. Eh? Outdoorsman, that's pretty useless, honestly. Uh, let's see, what were the good ones? Stimulant psychosis, addiction resistance, bookworm cannibal. Deft is pretty good. You miss a lot in this game, so being able to immediately attempt another strike is definitely good. Totally worth one point for sure. Disease resistant? Nah. Fast reflexes. Three points, wow. 
That's pretty good though, being able to dodge grabs um, and attacks. We'll, we'll keep that one in mind. I think I'll take it. Fleet footed. That's pretty good. Uh, good hearing. Not really. Yeah, for the same reasons you wouldn't want to take good memory. Garmin is actually pretty good. Um, you won't really see its effects early game, but eventually you can use it to kind of just it, it. It's actually pretty good. It basically allows you to overgorge yourself without like screwing. Like usually overgorging will kind of screw you up a bit, but this. Um, will let you just overeat and then you kind of carry that morale bonus over for a prolonged amount of time. It also allows you to eat crappy food more, so overall just does a lot for two points. I forgot to set my skin tone. Not that that matters. Uh, how about bronze? Because he's tanned, right? Yeah. High adrenaline can be okay, but you're already getting adrenaline anyway, it's just kind of whatever. My my go-to build for like a wilderness build is probably usually like spears and archery. Both kind of have good reusability for, and have a short crafting path. Both will want strength and dex. Let's see. High adrenaline end. Oh yeah, this is good. I I do want this one. This gives you extra stamina. That's pretty good. Light eater, light step, masochist. Oh, night vision is pretty good. Um, okay, just an Hardcore expert is is normally pretty good. I don't know how needed it is for a wilderness start. It's still probably pretty good. I mean, so hardcore expert and fleet footed are two different sides of a similar coin. I guess I don't know what euphemism works here, but basically, fleet footed will help you be fast on open terrain and. Uh, the whatever the other one is, parkour expert will make you faster on non like sort of obstacle ridden terrain. Either one of them are good. I, I kind of like to have both, I guess, but I can't because I'm up to I'm up to ten already. I can only really take one or the other. I'm trying to think if any of these others are good. Quick is good. I don't know if I need fast reflexes. I think I think I like it. Being able to dodge is pretty good. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do parkour expert it's it's a little more useful i feel um maybe not at the start in wilderness but there's still a decent amount of like unsure footing um but it especially is good once we get into the city so i have one point left uh I usually don't really so these ones this is one reason I like to do the single point pool is like I would have had to put I don't know like two or whatever points into these and I don't really want to put any points in here because they only really help you get off to a good start but they're just not that needed really because all of these are trainable skills whereas like the traits aren't necessarily trainable some of them are mutatable but I've never been able to pull that off. And these stats, they also, I, I think there's ways to increase them, but I think it involves mutations. And like, I mean, I'm even like debating taking away one of mine to get my strength up because you really do need a lot of strength to use some of the higher tier bows. And it just helps you with carry weight and everything too, melee fighting.
It's a lot of points to, to, to make fast reflexes work. I know for sure Deft, Gormand, Indefatable, Night Vision, uh, for sure I want them. It's just parkour and fast reflexes I'm not necessarily sure on. I could I could remove fast reflexes and just take fleet, fleet footed and just say that I because then I could put one more into strength if I'm fleet footed and a parkour expert I should really have no need to actually get hit by anything unless I fuck up so let's do that that'll help because if anything it gives me some extra buffer even to use the stuff that requires like 10 or more strength because there's a ton of conditions that can really lower your strength temporarily and not being able to shoot your bow is a pretty big deal pretty big deal uh can i what's my random name oh should we have a random name or should we create a name how about willie a good hobo name. Willie Hubertson. Yeah. Willie Hubertson. Oh, let's do it. No skills. Don't need no skills. I'm a hobo. Come on. I don't need no skills. All right, we should. And I will say, I don't necessarily like to power game this game it's much more of just like a for fun and almost like super nerdy borderline like role-playing game for me um this is an interesting start there's like nothing around <laughs> usually you get like trees or some shit i'm just in an open fucking field i guess okay is there anything good to pick up what do we got down here blood soaked rag it could be that could be cleaned into, if I boil that, I can make it a normal rag. Puddle of blood, casings, I don't really need the casings. Newspapers, useless. Okay, cigar butt. Don't need that really. That looks, huh, the graphics imply that it's, so is this a cigar butt too? It looks kind of like a stick to me, but I guess it's a cigar butt. These kind of look like arrows too. What do we got over here? Large rock. Hmm. What if my tile set, tile set is having issues? Pretty sure large rock used to, you know, actually show as a rock. <laughs> this is... And this is like nothing. Hmm. That's disappointing. Last I played, the tile set didn't have issues. This is like the animation that a, a large rock is supposed to look like. Oh well. What about these? Are these correct? Tulip. Oh, I see. Small boulder. Okay, I guess maybe the tile set's okay. I don't know. Bluebell. So that's... I could make cordage out of that. This lily, I think I made quarter jelly out too. I don't know which direction. I guess let's go down here, get some rocks. We're gonna need rocks anyway. I can get some of this for cordage too. So, oh, what? What is this? Ubo? Oh, okay. This. I gotta get my controls correct here. It's definitely one of those games where you got fucking every key on your keyboard plus the shift version of the keys doing some sort of function. Alright, let's take the rocks. What about this? Oh yeah, so every a lot of actions you do, it's it's pretty similar like if you ever played Morrowind or whatever, or Oblivion. Not Skyrim, uh, but like doing little actions will basically improve your uh character so like oh shit what did i do uh nope how do i oh shit what did it... 
Okay, how do I get to my... I want to like see my character screen. Skills. I guess I'll just look through everything real quick. Uh, view, 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 view. Look at s some of these are unbound, huh? Oh, I don't know why it's an at sign, but okay. So what you'll notice down here, uh, survival, I, I have it at 8% now. These are those skills that we were talking about where we didn't take any of them. So everything's at 0% except for survival. So when I picked up those items and I forged through this brush that's to my the left of my character, each of those actions increased my survival skill for wilderness start survival skill is pretty important like i'm gonna have to get it up soon enough that i can actually you know build some stuff um let's see what did i just uh, and I'm, this game's a lot easier uh when you know the fucking controls um build what the hell? Craft? What is that? Okay, craft. Construct. Terrain. Weird. Um, but what I, the first thing I need to look into like gathering materials for is a makeshift shelter. Um, so I need to get survival up to two. This is not the one I want though. Uh, what about I lean to? Or short screens. No, it's like a. Where is the fucking Jesus? Um, I guess they changed it. Maybe they removed it from the start. They used to be able to have this option for like a, I don't know, like a really basic shelter of like leaves and shit. But it looks like maybe now I have to do the lean to route. So that kind of sucks. That makes things a lot harder. Because you'll notice, like, I need, like, plastic sheet or tarp. And I even need strings. Like, those are things I really need to get to town to find. Whereas, like, oh, I guess this works. A pine lean to. Okay, so I, I should just look for stout branches. Planks I'm not going to find. Unless I find, like, a broken down barn or something. Looks like we got water down here, so let's let's take a look down here. Uh, let's get the rocks, though. We know we'll, we, we're going to need rocks, so... Oops. So we got a water source here. That's good to remember. Oh, is that a... What type of dog is that? Lab. Labs can fuck you up if they become hostile. But that'll be good if I can make that my pet. I'll 
keep that in mind. Ooh, hopefully it doesn't die to this rattlesnake. I kind of want to, I should probably just forage all these uh, brushes, see what I can find. Every night, it's pretty random what you can find in the brush. Do I have water on me? Uh, where's my items? So I have beans, cheap wine, whiskey, bottle of gin. Let's throw this gin out, because who drinks gin without mixing it, right? So can I empty this? Just gonna pour it on the ground there. I, I'll put. Um, so I'm gonna fill this glass bottle with water. Uh, right now, this water is not really drinkable. I mean, I could if I need to, but once I get a fire going, I can boil that to something more usable. Oh, what the hell? I found a thermos. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna want that. I guess, wait, why can't I, I have volume for it, why did I have to drop that? The fuck? Did they change how volume works? What the hell? Be stored in. What? So I have to... Does that mean I, I can only store it in those things now? That kind of sucks. Like, what about like a leather backpack? Can I store it in a leather backpack? Pocket one. Oh. So... I am very confused. So I see this in the bottom, like, so in the bottom left it says I have, I have a pocket. Oh no, this is a pocket in this thing. There's three water in it. I am so fucking confused. So I'm Holding a thermos, I it says that so I says I have fucking like six volume left, ton of weight left. A bindle with two items. What? what does it have in it? It has. How do I get to the left? Fucking, how do I scroll? What the hell? Up page down. Okay. Um, contents of this item a gallon. Okay, what about I am confused. It's like it wants to put it in the bindle, which is full, but I myself have this volume available. So what the fuck? Pouch? What the fuck? Pouch with three items? What's this? Pouch. Make shift bag. Very fucking confused.
So what's the point of my character volume if I can only now fit things in these? Like what I'm what is that just like left over now? Like there must be something I'm missing here. see any options here um, There's the skill rust option. I am really confused. This is definitely not how the game used to work. Um, it's going to make it a really tough game if I can't fucking like store this shit. Okay, can I like store this somewhere? Activate insert insert items into furnace no well at any rate I do want that to have water in it but man I am so fucking confused here Tell you what, let's uh, <laughs> I guess this first video we'll just have the creation of the character. I'm gonna do a little research, figure out what the fuck is going on here, and then we'll resume with another video. How about that? Uh, yeah, until next video.